Positive reinforcement is widely regarded as the most effective way to train a dog, but there's more to it than just food. Three ways to add some more rocket fuel to your training without increasing food are coming up. Ian here with Simpatico Dog Training. And before we talk about positive reinforcement, please make sure you're subscribed so you never miss any of our videos. Also, follow us on all the big social networks so we can get better acquainted. And don't forget to check the YouTube description for notes, links, and resources about the stuff we talked about. Now today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite subjects, what I call the positive training trifecta. Basically, these are three types of rewards you can use with your dog in your positive reinforcement training arsenal. Those are presents, compliments, and massages. Most of you are already doing this stuff, so the aim of this video isn't to show you something new and revolutionary, but rather to shine a spotlight on it and to get you thinking and using it strategically. I want you to understand a bit about what happens in your dog's brain and how you can capitalize on that process. Once you start thinking like this and start tweaking your application, holy smokes, you'll be amazed at how fast your dog starts paying better attention and doing what you ask. Before we get into the details though, let's talk a little bit about positive reinforcement. What the heck does that really mean? In dog training, we really only have two approaches, classical conditioning and operant conditioning. Everything is basically some application of those two things. Now, positive reinforcement is one of the four quadrants of operant conditioning developed by Burris Frederick Skinner in the 1940s. Reinforcement simply means that we are increasing a behavior. We are making it more likely to happen again in the future. The positive part means we are adding something. Remember that positive and negative don't mean good or bad. Dog training is based on psychology, and psychology is a science, and in science, positive and negative don't mean good or bad, they mean addition and subtraction. So, positive reinforcement means that we are adding a desirable stimulus in order to increase a behavior. That's it. Many people get caught up in the thinking that to increase the influence of positive reinforcement, we need to increase the value of the food that we're using. No, we don't. Layering together other kinds of rewards significantly increases the power of the reward system in the first place. And the proper use of food as a training tool should always include an exit strategy so that you can get away from it. I talked about this in my phasing out treats video. Once you've stopped using food, what do we have left? Compliments and massages. Things we've layered on top of the food from the beginning and now the absence of the food isn't nearly as significant. So what we're talking about today are three types of rewarding stimuli that I feel give me the most bang for my buck when I'm working with a dog. Number one is presents. Presents are anything that you present to your dog. As we mentioned, food is the most obvious and widely used kind of present. Food can expedite the training process, it's terrific for use as both a lure and a reward, and it's unmatched when used in classical conditioning. While food is a great tool, it's also terribly abused. Many owners use too much food and use lures way too long. We have to phase it out quickly or we'll be using it indefinitely. Thus, food is not the only type of present we have available. Toys can and should be used to train your dogs. We can use toys as lures and rewards for things like calm and heal and take it, leave it, drop it. Playing with toys is a fantastic training opportunity. In fact, this is the point behind several of my videos. You can also present abstract things to your dog, such as opportunities, specifically life rewards. The opportunity to run free, to play with other dogs, to play fetch or tug, to sniff the ground and pee on some weeds, and other things dogs enjoy can be easily leveraged as training rewards. The second one is compliments. Compliments are essentially quality verbal feedback. Specifically, we covered this in the voice and marker training video, but suffice it to say that accurate, timely, and efficient communication is the backbone of good training. We mark behaviors we want, we encourage them to keep going when they're doing it right, and we praise them enthusiastically when they're done. Finally, massages. That tactile interaction is a woefully underused strategy. In my touch tactics video, I discussed this in greater detail, but in a nutshell, there are several spots on your dog that are wired up with bundles of nerves that go right to the pleasure centers in their brain. Briefly, these are the chin and the chest, just in front of the ears, the shoulders and sides of the body, the inguinal area, the base of the tail, and the backs of the thighs. So to make the positive training trifecta work, we simply layer all three styles of rewards onto correct responses. Yes, very good, honey. 
Very good. Very good. Oh, that's a great job. That's a great job. Good job. Okay, let's do it again. Yes, that was the best one. Yeah. We're gonna do one more. Ready? What is it, Dixie? You wanna get Oh, yes. That's a good boy. 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 Have a kiss? No, oh, I didn't kill. Okay, come on, buddy. <laughs> Let's jump back into the science a little bit here. Scientific studies on dogs' brains show that being fed, being praised, being touched, and even just a few minutes of playing with their owners prompt a release of a number of feel-good chemicals, including serotonin, prolactin, oxytocin, dopamine, and beta-endorphin. These are all the natural feel-good drugs both your body and your dog's body manufacture. These create feelings of trust, attachment, and love. They decrease the sensitivity of pain receptors, and they produce feelings of euphoria. These feelings and the chemical processes in the brain even have a somewhat addictive quality to them. This is why we're drawn to our hobbies and favorite foods and even certain people. I think you can see where this is headed. Each of the three reward types, presents, compliments, and massages, can and will produce these chemical reactions on their own. But layering them together and using them strategically will not only amplify the effects but make several options suddenly available to you. This is all, as we've said in the beginning, positive reinforcement, a component of operant conditioning. But let's take a sidestep here for a second and talk about the other big approach in training, classical conditioning. In the simplest terms, classical conditioning is learning by association. Two stimuli are linked together to produce a new learned response. Two of Skinner's graduate students, Marion and Keller Breland, continued his work and went to become both giants in the field of applied animal psychology and two of the world's most respected animal trainers. They established early on that classical conditioning is inseparable from operant conditioning. Not only is classical conditioning integrated into the process of operant conditioning, but we are always, always classically conditioning our dogs when we work with them. We are developing what's called conditioned emotional responses to us and to practicing in general. What that means is that deploying the positive training trifecta consistently and genuinely not only acts as an accelerant for training purposes, but it builds a powerful rapport and bond with your dog. It cultivates what we call owner gravity. When all of those feel-good chemicals flood their body on a consistent basis, they start associating all of those good feelings with you and consequently develop a strong attachment and drive to please you. Over time, the act of doing these things becomes self-rewarding. Doing things with you and doing what you ask become one of their favorite hobbies. This is how you get a dog that pays attention to you, that checks in during walks and off-leash time, that offers behaviors without being asked, and is generally pretty happy and agreeable most of the time. As with most of my videos, this advice is aimed for the typical pet dog owner. These may not be appropriate for working or competition dogs, and you'll have to adapt everything for severe behavior problems. Of course, seek help from a qualified professional in these cases. I would say though, that with about 99% of the dogs that I work with in private sessions, in group classes, and even in the shelters, this stuff works so fast, so fast. In fact, of the thousands of dogs I've worked with, I can count the ones this stuff didn't work on with one hand. And yes, I know some of you are thinking it, this does work pretty well with children and significant others. I've linked to all the videos I mentioned in the YouTube description. I've also linked to some scientific articles and people so you can learn more if you so desire. Now, questions for you. What are your favorite highlights from this video? What are some cool insights you gained from it? And what questions do you have? Let's connect in those YouTube comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, keep learning, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.